That's a really, really common mistake. Don't do that and you're miles ahead of the game. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. In this video, I'm going to show you the top three mistakes that I see instrument pilots make. If you are working on an instrument rating or if you are an instrument pilot and you can avoid these three things, you're way ahead of the game. The first thing is climbing after you level off. When you level off the airplane, you have to wait to get to something close to cruise speed before you pull that power out. The reason is the trim setting that you used is based on airflow. If you simply level off by pulling the power back at 80 knots or whatever, then over the next 10 minutes as the airplane accelerates, it will pitch back into a climb to seek that 80 knot speed. Uh, so many private pilot instructors will teach you to level off with power and it's really the wrong thing. The place that this shows itself usually is when you transition to instruments. You'll level off at your altitude, you'll think you're level, you'll get busy doing something else. A few minutes later you look up and you're three, four hundred feet above your altitude and climbing because the airplane is still trimmed for that climb speed. Don't do it. Here's what it looks like. Here's the first one. This is so common. This is a, a problem really for VFR pilots, but it really you know, shows its face when people transition to instruments because you know, 100 feet this way or that way, VFR, people tend to sort of eh, not worry about it too much. But under instruments, 200 feet, and it's a big deal. So this is what happens. People who are leveling off with power, you're trimmed for a climb airspeed. So although it will work to level off with power, like if I'm going to pick 4,400 here, I can stop the climb with power. The problem is I'm still flying at that slow airspeed. You see, I effectively stopped the climb, but what's going to happen now over the next 10 minutes is as I, you know, move on to other things and the airplane accelerates with, to my new cruise speed, whatever that is, it's going to seek that speed it was trimmed for. It's going to just continue back into the climb while I get distracted and do things like talk to you. There it is, you can see it happening already. That's 100 feet per minute up. But as we accelerate, it's going to continue to get worse. So the way you really need to level off is to create the top of the hill yourself. You have to pitch forward. Let's use 4,500. We're here, we're climbing at a climb airspeed. We get to 4,500. You have to make a conscious pitch change. You have to pitch forward, create the flat plane the new cruise speed will come up, so once you get close to your new cruise speed, you can power back and set your new trim setting, and now you're trimmed for whatever that new speed is, right? And the airplane, you can then do a flow check and a checklist and confidently move on to other things without worrying about the airplane re-entering the climb. Another thing is turning when you look down. This will happen in one of two ways. If you look down and the airplane turns to the left, it's like that old saying about motorcycles. It's the reason you don't look down in the turn, right? You're going to go where you look. So when you look down, inadvertently, you're pulling on the yoke and you'll turn the airplane left. This might happen or the opposite thing might happen. You might kind of know about this and you'll look down and you'll overcompensate by giving it right aileron and start a turn to the right. Nine times out of 10, if you're trimmed properly, the best thing to do when you look down, if you have to look down, is let go of the yoke. Just momentarily, just release your grip, look down, look back up at the flight instruments and make sure that you are, are got the performance you want. Remember also that it's just never really a good thing in instrument flight to put your head down like this. It contributes to spatial disorientation. So whenever possible, let go of the yoke, hold things up into your field of vision so that you can see the flight instruments behind it. This is what happens. People look down at their iPad and they look down here to do something and they turn the airplane by accident. They go like this because their hand is on the yoke or they're either going to do that, this is a, such a common error, or they're going to try to outsmart themselves and they're going to think, I know I'm going to pull down my left hand. So when they look down, they put in a little bit of right to try to like counteract it. And the only solution to not doing that is literally picking up your stuff and like holding it up here. Right, so that you don't have to move your head. You can just move your eyes from the flight instruments. See, like I can see that I'm climbing immediately. I can push down if I'm climbing a little bit. I can see that I'm turning or not turning. I can see what heading I'm flying. 
and I can still just use my eyes to go back and forth between whatever I'm looking at on ForeFlight and whatever I need to see on the flight instruments or if I'm doing a checklist. This one kind of drives me crazy, but if you are turning to intercept a course and you can see in the turn that you're not going to intercept the course, don't continue the turn all the way through until you're paralleling the course that you meant to be on. Stop short on an intercept angle. So learn to see the headings and know that these headings over here are possible intercepts to the course that you want. If you're not going to intercept the course in the turn, stop early on that intercept angle and wait for the needle to center. Take a look at this holding pattern and imagine you are here on the outbound leg. And as you turn back toward the holding course, you're turning into a wind. So you never actually cross the holding course. You just, you need to roll out on an intercept heading toward the course. There really is no point in coming all the way around and paralleling the course only to have to come back and turn onto that intercept angle. You really need to be able to think ahead and stop the turn early if you see you're not going to make it. Hey aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. If you have not yet gotten your free three-day trial of Ground School, come to learnthefinerpoints.com. You can get that. Also, there is a free gift video. If you haven't seen that, just scroll to the bottom of our homepage. If you'd like to support the content you see from The Finer Points, you can visit patreon.com slash learn TFP. There's tons of bonus content there, as well as live hangouts with me every month and much, much more. You can check that out at patreon.com slash learn TFP. As always, a big thanks to the sponsors. Remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select pilot protection services. And as always, a big thanks to you guys, the best fans on the internet for watching this video. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell so you get notified of uploads and share far and wide with your friends. But most importantly, until next time, be safe and fly your best.